Welcome to part two of this uh, recording about what I've called the Buzeki factor, which I expect to come out uh, in the forthcoming polls, which we are going to face uh, very, very, very soon. Yeah. Now, it is not hard to figure out why Kenyan voters have changed. Okay. Uh, actually, let me put it another way. It is not hard to figure out where long-suffering Kenyan voters have changed. Okay? It is very simple. For years and for very many elections, Kenyan voters have been put into compartments. And then what have they gotten as a result? Because you just vote one day, the elections are over. Then you have to live with this joker for five years until the next election. Okay? And uh, what is happening now is that uh, there's the other factors coming into place because you vote for a governor in a particular county and maybe that's a county where you work, okay? And maybe your home county is another county. Therefore, even if you don't read newspapers, you're able to compare the performance of the governor in your working place county and the governor in your home area county. And sometimes, the, in most cases, they're not at par you'll find that there's one governor performing better. There's a lot of development on the ground. Things are moving. Things are happening. While another governor is just holding tribal meetings. Okay? Now, what do you expect the voter to do? Yeah, tribe gets people emotionally pent up. Tribe gets people emotionally worked up. But uh, there are times when tribe ends, as I've illustrated this before. Yeah? One of the factors that uh, very quickly gets rid of the tribal effect is something called the stomach. If you're hungry... If things are not working out for you economically, a uh, tribe may take a back seat. I'm not saying must. <laughs> I don't have strong views like that on these issues, yeah? Because human beings are funny, yeah? Uh, sometimes, tribe may just take a back seat, okay? Or tribe may be the second factor to be considered. If we're right about the Buzeki factor, then we're going to see in places like Machakos, somebody like uh, Governor Alfred Mutua, being comfortably re-elected okay now we know that is a jubilee sorry we know that is a, a, a nasa stronghold yeah uh, nasa backyard one of the principles in fact the deputy president uh, designate or rather the running mate of Raila Odinga comes from that area uh, but if the buzeki factor we're talking about here is correct then what could possibly happen is that we could get alfred mutua re-elected but then the NASA still get their votes. The presidential candidate still get their votes. Yeah? But the presidential candidate will get their votes, but they will not get the governor's vote. The vote for governor will go somewhere else. And I expect that to happen right across the country. I expect a lot of independent candidates to get elected. I expect voters to completely reject this uh, six-piece voting. Yes, and I'm not a magician. It is just looking at the trends clearly on the ground, opening eyes a bit wider, analyzing what is happening on the ground, even taking a newspaper and analyzing what is happening right across the country. That is read, that is that should be a clear trend that's happening. Now, the big question is how big will this Buzeki factor be countrywide? Now, that is a question uh, I cannot answer. I don't think anybody can answer that question. Okay? But let's look at it another way, or in another way, from another angle. Assuming that countrywide, the Buzeki factor is a mere 5%. Yeah? Just 5%. 5% of the voters say no to tribe, they say no to party affiliation, and they say we will vote for the person we think is the best person for us for this particular seat. Then that lab, what will happen if it is only 5%, it will completely turn upside down everything. Yeah? If you can look uh, very quickly at another example of this Buzeki factor, the governor for Kwale, Salim Mvuria, uh, defected from ODM to Jubilee in 2016. Yeah, and in fact is running on a Jubilee ticket. But our surveys on the ground show that, uh, and you know what we hear from the ground, is that the man is still hugely popular. And chances are very high that is going to be re-elected. So, we'll have a situation again where he's uh, re-elected. Jubilee ticket, he's the governor, he makes it. But then the general vote in the area for the presidency goes to NASA as expected. Yeah? Uh, uh, everything is pointing to this kind of uh, uh, um, scenario uh, all over the country. Now, the interesting thing, 
or the good news to Kenyan voters and those who would like to have a free and just election is that this kind of complication makes rigging that more difficult. Not impossible, but it just makes rigging the election that more difficult. Uh, rigging, the experts on rigging will tell you, normally works on predictability. Yeah, where you can be able to predict exactly how people are going to vote and then it's very easy to stuff votes in such a way that uh, it's not detected. Yes, but when uh, people have such unpredictable uh, voting patterns, rigging becomes that much harder. Okay, I will just give you a quick example. I've mentioned this several times. During the Moy days, the way rigging was done is that they would have uh, intelligence officers spread right across the country and these people would phone in uh, the trends in voting. Okay, uh, and then they'll be able to do a, a rough estimate, and then the votes uh, for Moi would be staffed accordingly, yeah, very carefully. So that was very difficult to detect, it was impossible to get any evidence that actually it was rigged. Yeah, at the end of it, you'd see the result, you'd be suspicious, but there's nothing to pin Moi down on. Yeah, that's how it was done, very smart. So, in the same way, it, it, the rules, the basic rules of rigging have not changed. You need a predictable election outcome. Yeah? You need predictable voting along tribal lines. Now, when people abandon these tribal lines and start voting in a different way, it makes rigging that much more difficult. Okay? Now, in the next and final part of this recording, uh, we will look at how the Buzeki factor will affect uh, the presidential race. I think that should be the most interesting of this uh, three-part recording. See you then a bit. Click on that link on the top left-hand corner of your screen right now. And I'll see you there in a second. This is Chris Kumekuta.